In this video, I'm going to prove how random people are continuously acting against me on behest of the Danish state and intelligence agency, PET, especially when they want to actualize their active measures against me, Stephen Bell. Now I can provide and show a pattern of behavior that directly proves this. When I moved from Esbjerg to North Jutland, my new neighbour, Jane Larson, immediately just started to make complaints about me to my landlord and to the municipality of Maya Fjord. Because I had just started my business then, called One Stop Engine Shop. This is a venture that the government has ever since its inception, continuously ever since, seek to sabotage. And the way that they go about this is almost like everything else, using members of the public as their de facto proxies, and they have had great success, especially using my neighbour, Jane Larson, who would practically do and say whatever they told her to do. That is why she has written so many letters to my landlord and to the municipality, the latter of which initiated proceedings against me, according to planning laws, treating my newly founded and very small business as a full-scale garage that I had established on my home address. The municipality were of course not willing to come and see the premises or listen to anything that I put forth in these regards. I mean, completely corrupt the proceedings from start to finish. Something that I documented extensively in a video that you see in the description called Active Measures from 28th of August of 2020. And to cut a longer story shorter, the municipality forbade me having my small business on that address which, is, which resulted in me moving to my current location. The fact that I made an extensive video documentary providing evidence to support my claims about me being railroaded by the municipality of Maya Fjord on behest of the state is what prompted the Danish intelligence agency, PET, to coerce or entice my neighbour, Jane Larson, to report me to the police for something that is obviously not a crime. Only so intelligence, through their proxy, could lay out a carefully crafted narrative in the police report. To some extent, a false psychological profile on me, obviously with the intent to discredit me. Furthermore, one important note, it is also explicitly, explicitly spelled out that I'm supposedly psychologically unstable, something that they claim is clear to be seen in this video documentary, so you can be the judge of that. And remember, all of these things that are written about me in the police report is something that my begrudged neighbour is supposedly saying about me while reporting me to the police for the simple act of publishing documents about the municipality case in which her name and address also featured, as well as other information in regards to that case that she herself had put in motion. Needless to say, the prosecutor's office was not willing whatsoever to try to press charges or prosecute me because obviously no crime had been committed. But nevertheless, in a later matter, the police would go back to this fraudulent case as if it was a rendered judgment against me. Furthermore, relying on this information that had been provided supposedly by my begrudged neighbor who clearly tried to have me charged for something that wasn't even a crime. We shall revisit this fraudulent behaviour by the police later on. Let's look at some more concrete examples of the Danish intelligence agency, PET, using random members of the public as their de facto proxies. When I was doing my hunting licence studies in 2023, I was subjected to a lot of gaslighting and indirect gang stalking by the other students and teachers at the school that I was doing my hunting licence. Obviously, they were trying to do everything to sabotage me achieving getting a hunting license. So obviously, they wanted me to react in, in response to this uh, gaslighting behavior only so that they could deny, deny what they were doing afterwards and thereby deny me getting my hunting license. And the only reason they didn't succeed was because I didn't act out as I was intended and thereby I didn't get entrapped by this uh, gang stalking and gaslighting. PET's continuous efforts obviously didn't stop here because as soon as I completed the hunting license exams, which are quite extensive, they immediately got someone anonymous to report me to the police. 
not for a crime, but supposedly for being strange and having videos on my social media in relation to the public persecution of me and the social engineering experiment, as can be seen in these police records. And the wording is of course direct quotations from the program's propaganda narratives too. Furthermore, North Jutland Police, despite no crime was being alleged, encouraged the anonymous reporter to make a more extensive report on me, citing my videos from my social media more specifically, which this person and perhaps others have done on behest of the Danish state, which can be seen from these two case numbers here that appear shortly after this fraudulent police report was made. Furthermore, North Jutland Police and the District Attorney are unsurprisingly not willing to give me FOIA access to these cases, despite me requesting repeatedly. And here comes the kicker. The contradictory grounds for this denial are as follows. The cases are supposedly criminal and active, but they don't want to charge me or even interview me despite me making myself available for that precisely. Moreover, if they wanted to charge me, I would have many more rights than I do otherwise, one of which, obviously, is that I would be able to see the case file. The same can be said if they were to interview me, I would get a good idea of what the specifics are of these fabricated cases. The cases are obviously completely arbitrary and open-ended, so that they can change to whatever, whenever, according to the intelligence agency's commands and active measures. Hence why they're being kept secret from me. The corrupted ways in which the Danish state and intelligence agencies are acting in everything in relation to me, Stephen Bell, is what makes it so difficult to fight against it. In fact, it's almost impossible to do anything concrete until they actualize their active measures against me and that is something that they won't do until that they can for sure actually get me for what they're trying to set me up for. This modus of fabricating cases and using random members of the public as their de facto proxies to put forth these fraudulent cases or provocations has continued. A local person where I live have reported me and my car to the police on the 24th of April 2024 as being part of a home invasion in January of 2024, obviously with the intent to implicate me in serious crimes, knowing full well that I had absolutely nothing to do with it. Again, this is done on behest of intelligence, who are even making public announcements about these kinds of extrajudicial efforts. So to normalize these types of active measures, which are ultimately intended to set me up, the Danish intelligence agency, PET, tried to make use of this fake police report. So they set in motion another active measure that took place on the 30th of April, only six days after the fake police reporting, in the exact same town that the home invasion took place. And they enticed a small group of locals to make a plot against me, where the person who had falsely reported me to the police for the home invasion was supposedly also a witness to this provocation where they had a man for no reason try to provoke me to a fist fight at the local supermarket. The only reason that it wasn't successful is because I recorded the whole incident on my dash cam and video recording on my person. So no matter the narrative that they intended to tell with these carefully placed witnesses, I would be able to provide the actual recording which obviously didn't show any fist fight, despite how close it became. As I said previously in this video, the police would go back and rely on a non-existing case from 2020 that the prosecutor's office wasn't even willing to touch, and furthermore rely on my begrudged neighbor's statement about my mental faculties, something that is also completely unheard of, as if the case and her statement had been found to be true in a court of law. This has now taken place in relation to a background check the police have made on me in regard to my sport shooting activities at the firing range, which like everything else that I do, is continuously being sabotaged. They are obviously trying to fabricate grounds for revoking my hunting and sport shooting licenses Again, because I don't act out in relation to the gang stalking and gaslighting,
the way they intend, they have tried the next best thing, relying on the fraudulent police report from 2020 from my neighbour, put forth by intelligence through Jane Larson as their proxy, hence why PET conducted this active measure in the first place, with exactly this type of thing in mind. So here we have a very extensive and clear pattern of intelligence prolifically using the program's real-time communication systems to have people gangstalk and gaslight me and to entice people to, uh, to act against me in all sorts of malicious and fraudulent ways for no apparent reason. You have intelligence constantly pushing regular authorities like municipalities, the regular police and even the prosecutor's office to be much more draconian and arbitrary in any matter that I'm involved in. In a constant effort to sabotage the things that I do and ultimately with the intent to set me up in all kinds of predicaments and cases so that they can come after me for it in an official capacity. This is classic intelligence using problem reaction solution tactics and dirty tricks and using regular police and prosecutor's office to finalize their active measures. All of the relevant authorities are all acutely aware of how the Danish intelligence agency, PET, and the state, not to mention their international partners in the UK and the US, are flagrantly persecuting me in public, contrary to the rule of law. Moreover, these authorities are likewise, for all intents and purposes, utterly controlled and managed by intelligence and the justice ministry. The reasons why all this is being done so openly now is because of how much success they have had in labelling me Stephen Bell as Denmark's persona non grata, constantly accused of everything under the sun. So I'm hated and despised by large percentages of the population, purely based on the broadcasted propaganda and psychological operations that are being levelled against the public on a continuous basis. So there is really no limit to what they are capable and willing to do. So here in mid-October of 2024, I'm truly living under an apartheid state where I'm being persecuted in public by government and intelligence and the population in general is indifferent and decadent. To all of this, lastly but not least, everything that happens in these regards are an integral part of the US-run global social engineering experiment.